ndi igbo eke na emu unu asem ka nka echikwelu ya zelo asi ndu miri ndu azu mmi na atanu mazu anwuna asa drai mana eke drai mana ori fozai mana afo fozai mana nkpo oza ya nu nke ndi igbo jibiri asi na adira ni igbo na mma o ise 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 am di ko si de ka bapu ni osi gosi ni ya bi faji maka wo ebia na tupu aya ga ni gosi ni ya bi fe obara nka bu posi zige ina ejete afo channel la ya ni gba kwukwo ka ba ro ke like and subscribe o ti ko comment share ko ya to sa ya bozi ko mu na ndi no ebe di teacher we ni ya bi fe na eme no boda adi ko si de ya wote do nta ta bu nuku update di oke mpa ma cho ko nyo bu na misi ya ma cho ki ge ya bi fe I guess I'll be fine with the Luno. But some of you be fine with me, no I know him here, and we're going to be doing our job. Drop all your own comment. First time a woman will serve as the White House Chief of Staff. President-elect Donald Trump named co-campaign chair Susie Wiles to the role on Thursday. The Chief of Staff is often considered one of the most important unelected posts in Washington D.C. Wiles has gained respect among Republican allies throughout her career in political campaigns, along with her work on the Trump 2024 campaign. She was his state director in Florida for the previous two contests. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Today is Thursday of November 2024. There is an information at my disposal that came yesterday. And what could that be? The presidency, when I mean the presidency, the federal government of Nigeria allegedly had meeting yesterday for them to start lobbying against Biafra agitation to the new government that is coming in America. That sounds funny, right? That sounds irrelevant. It doesn't make sense. How would presidency start lobbying against Biafra agitation and IPOB to the new president elect? By the way, Trump has communicated to the presidents of South Africa, Egypt, and Kenya. I don't know whether he's lying the giant of Africa, but that is a topic for another day. Now, this is a disturbing news to the presidency. And why is it a disturbing news to the presidency? Stay with me throughout this video. I am going to decode one of the greatest secrets about Biafra agitation, Trump's government, and the Nigeria government that you have never heard before. Now, I am going to tell you that one of the most important things to Tim Lumbu's government now is to convince the government of Donald J. Trump why there should not be secession in Nigeria. And why is it so? Donald J. Trump just announced that the co-chair of his campaign, Susie Wise, will be his own chief of staff. And who is Susie Wise? Susie Wise is the lobbyist of Nambekano before the Congress in America. Nambekano, through the IPOB during the time Nambekano had not been put into detention, was paying Susie Wise company. She has a lobbyist company, a lobbying company that lobbies for people if you want to do anything. It's not only about the Biafra education. She lobbies for both tobacco companies and so many companies in America. Now, why is this a disturbing news? So the wise personally have interest about the liberation of people who have been punished because of their self-determination. She's in love with that. And that is why she found interest about Biafra education. Now, in the year 2020, they asked Enam Bekano to come closer to Donald Trump's campaign and so on and so forth, so that when Donald Trump becomes the 46th president of America, it will be easier for them to do everything they have planned. Unfortunately, Donald Trump lost the election. During the campaign, you saw Enam Bekano was invited by the head of the Republican Party in, a, in the state of Iowa. Enam Bekano was there in the VIP, the news trended, the period, but people don't understand what was going on you know, underground, if I may say so. Now, after Donald Trump lost the election, it seems that the whole plan has been shattered. And the new government that came in, that is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they don't have interest about people who are dying. And that is why even when so many people were massacred, orchestrated massacred against the Christian on Christmas Eve, where they killed almost 200 and something people, they sacked the village in Plateau State, the whole world leaders almost reacted but america did not react because they don't find interest in doing all those things the only thing they have interest is that nigeria should be able to allow men who want to become women to become women people who want to become cats to become cat they should allow everybody to live the way they want that is what interests joe biden and Kamala harris now here is the tension this woman has been appointed by trump as the chief of staff 
And this is the most important thing to Nigeria government at this moment. Why? Because their fragitation, despite now the carries in detention, is going to get a new twist. And people don't understand how the international politics controls a lot of things that happen in Nigeria. Before I go forward, let me just digress a little to tell you that the demo, uh, the demo, what is it called? The Democrats, their party, that is the left wing of the United States uh, politics. They are responsible for so many things that are going on in Nigeria. I could remember how good luck Ebele Jonathan went to Barack Obama and begged Barack Obama, I need help in my country to fight against Boko Haram because people are sponsoring these terrorists and so on and so forth. Barack Obama was looking at Jonathan like someone who is non-entity because for him, he has killed Gaddafi and he's ready to do and do to any president in Africa. That power was intoxicating him. So Barack Obama single-handedly facilitated the removal of good luck Jonathan. Even while Nigeria election was going, Barack Obama sent troops to Ghana, waiting in Ghana. If anything happened, they would help to remove Jonathan. So Jonathan saw all those things and he gave up by making call to Buhari, even when Professor Atahiro Jega, the INEC chairman then, has not announced the election. Now, let us come back to what is happening, why the federal government is interested to negotiating to the new government that is coming to America, because they are afraid that the government is going to wholeheartedly support Biafra agitation because of marginalization and persecution of um, you know the minority people from across Africa. Let's dive into the news. So, following this development, Sahara Reporters published yesterday that how Donald Trump's new chief of staff, Susie Wise, worked for IPOB movement in 2019 through her lobbying firm. The article was written on November 9, 2024. Days ago, Trump, who defeated Vice President Kamala Harris in the tight presidential contest, had selected his campaign manager, Susie Wise, to serve as his chief of staff. Here is the details of the article. Susie Wise, the newly announced chief of staff to United States President elect Donald Trump, was co chair of a lobbying firm hired by the indigenous people of Biafra POB in 2019. And the two parties extensively worked together, records have shown. Days ago, Trump, who defeated Vice President Kamala Harris in the Thai presidential contest, has selected his campaign manager Susie Wise to serve as his chief of staff. Wise will be the first woman to serve as chief of staff. So the wife just helped me achieve one of the greatest political victories in America history and was an integral part of both my 2016 and 2020 successful campaigns, Trump said in the statement announcing his election. Susie is tough, smart, innovative, and is universally admired and respected. Susie will continue to work tirelessly to make America great again, Donald Trump added. The profile of Wise revealed that until earlier this year, she was a lobbyist for tobacco company Swisha International, for which she worked to influence Congress on FDA regulations, according to disclosures filed with the Senate. She is a co-chair of Mercury Public Affairs since February 2022, and she was a lobbyist for Ballard Partners, the firm founded by Trump and and campaign Bundler Brain Ballard. There she worked as a lobbyist for Coal Company Alliance Resources Partner, Insurance Company, Bankers Financial Corporation, General Motors Marketing Company, Zeta Global, Transportation Company, Origin Logistics, and more companies. A further probe into her records revealed that IPOB hired the Wise firm to lobby the Congress and the Senate Department on the promotion of human rights and democracy in Nigeria according to a report by foreignlobby.com in 2021, IPOB has a lobbying contract with the Mercury Public Affairs. The engagement, which started in October 2019, is for $85,000 per month, but the firm only disclosed $254,000 in payment with the U.S. Department of Justice for all of last year. According to media reports, the emergence of Donald Trump as the winner of the U.S. presidential election intensified hope of an independent nation known as Biafra. As Trump's victory was sealed, messages started to circulate in a WhatsApp group created for the Biafra education. President Donald Trump's victory is an inspiration to Biafrans all over the world. 
Trump's defeated Vice President Kamala Harris in the 6th November election to emerge as the 47th President of the United States of America. Why his own win has been viewed with a level of misgiving by his critics in Africa, there was jubilation in the Biafra agitation community. As world leaders sent out their congratulatory message to Trump, self-proclaimed Biafra Prime Minister Simon Ekba quickly joined the fray. As a remaining nation, the United States of Biafra looks forward to the USA's commitment to the principle of self-determination and the freedom of people to choose their own form of government, Ekba, who lives in Finland, said on X. Another, separate, another separate, separatist said on X, Biafrans is set to exit. We have suffered in the hands of Nigeria terrorist government. Freedom is now. The Republic of Biafra in Nigeria Eastern Region is dominated by the Igbo ethnic group. In 2020, the group claimed that the leadership of the U.S. Republican Party in Iowa invited Nambekano as a special guest at a Trump campaign rally. Four years earlier, Kano had written to Trump, then president-elect, and urged him to support Biafra's push for independence in the same way that he had amplified the message of Brexiters in the United Kingdom. So this is the details of the article from the Shara Reporters, and what do you understand by this? Well, for me, I think there is no cause for none, but uh, the federal government of Nigeria knows the reason, uh, the exact reason why they are panicking. They know the exact reason why they are trying to hold a meeting and start counter campaign against uh, this uh, Biafra agitation issue. Maybe they really understand that Trump stands for, especially for people who have been marginalized, persecuted because of their minority, because they find themselves in a country that is not suitable for them and so on and so forth. You know, I could remember how Trump also supported the Brexit. But the issue is this. The Nambekano's IPOB was not looking for America to come and help them and help them to do so many things. No. They were just looking for a way where they can push further to make sure they have their own country where no any other foreign government will interfere. That was the point um, Nambekano was pushing for. And what is happening today, the whole fight circulating from around the world, we had the former Nigeria military intelligence, um, Kunde Oluwami, Olu, sorry, <laughs> I forgot the name, but you know who I'm talking about, who have worked with the DSS and Oluwami, yes, Kunde Oluwami. So the man has sent files to so many international communities stating what he discovered when he was working with the DSS, that Nigeria is set to be Islamized, and the people in the presidency, senate, and governors are aware of it, but they don't want to act against it. All those files and this information available is something that could trigger this new government in U.S. to look into this, because the freedom of religion is sacrosanct. You cannot just come, and when you read Nigeria Constitution, you see Sharia inside, and you know you have a Christian people in the country, you have traditional institutions in the country, you have Jews in the country, and Sharia law um, is only constitution that is embedded in Nigeria Constitution. So one will think twice that, no, this thing is not supposed to be one. Instead of them to actually discuss the 1999 Constitution, that is, it is a fraud already. That, that constitution is a fraud. Now, what you are doing now, you want to start, you know, advancing the interest of those religious groups to actually now confirm that Nigeria is an Islamic state. And let me tell you something that people don't know. This thing was caused by the British between 1900 and 1960. They knew that they cannot govern the North except they allowed them to practice their religion and they were using their religious leader to basically govern them. It is called indirect rule. Immediately after independence, 1960, the British knew that they shouldn't have forged these two people together. They knew. But because they want to achieve the divide and rule and to be able to conquer and take our resources and steal whatever they want to steal over the years, they merged these two people together. They could not govern the North and South under one uh, religious or administrative administration. They know. So they now give independent and match you people to work together. That was why the 19th, 1960 coup started. That was how 19, uh, the, the Civil War started. Now, 86, Babangela came with the OIC stuff. Try to Islamize us. It didn't work. 
In 2000, when uh, 1999, 2000, when the person came, he permitted them to start practicing Sharia. Today now, they want to consolidate it. Once you remove that person, all of us, whether you are Arusa, Igbo, Yoruba, Jukun, Christian, traditional, you now you are now under the law, the Islamic law, mm. because they put it in the constitution. In fact, listening to the, the member that was representing Ahoda East, uh, Abu Anudua Federal Constituency, River State, I want to I want to get his words. He said personal matters. That that was envisaged, he says, by the people who drafted this constitution. And I want to quote him. The implication is, if the word personal is removed, Islamic law would have broader implications. The word personal was put there for a reason. Let's talk a bit about this whole conversation about Islamizing the country with our population and our dynamics. You know, is it possible that someone can sneak this in at some point? and force all of us under some sort of regulation that we do not ascribe to? Is it possible that this can happen in this country? It is possible, and don't be deceived. It's going to happen. Uh, do you know Constantinople? Today's Turkey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were almost 98% Christian before now. Today, they are, it's, a, it's an Islamic country. I, I, I mean, I did Islam in my master's program, and I was trained by... Uh, Professor Ali Jan is, is a Persian, he's an Iranian American. And I scored A, that's excellent in Islam. So I know them. It may take them 1,000 years to Islamize Nigeria. So they will take it slowly, gradually. They don't forget. All of us will be dead after some time. Our children that don't care, all this Jay Z will come. They will still Islamize this country. If they can do it in Turkey, today's Turkey, why, what stops you? Why do you think they won't do it here? Except we take steps now, because we are the ones that are talking about these things. Our next generation in 50 years will not even care. You understand? Mm. So I, I'm thinking that if some part of the country, I don't want to be specific, if they feel strongly about an ideology, a religious um, but I think they can restrict it to their area. And I think maybe Tinubu should do well by developing this issue of regional autonomy where everybody should uh, organize themselves. Or at worst, uh, let the country actually uh, go apart and you can do whatever you, you want in your, in your area. Uh, I've come to that conclusion that I don't think we can stay together because of this very strong belief about religion. So it's either we stay together or people should mind their religion and stay where they are and practice what they want. Imposing it on others is wrong. I study Islam, and I don't want to talk blasphemy here. If I start talking about Islam, in the next three hours, we will not live here. No, we, we don't want you to talk blasphemy either. You know, talking, know talking, about, talking about our country, you know, in many, we are not a religious country, so to on paper. We're a secular nation. Uh, what kinds of conversations should we be having with the Nigerian people, especially the, the younger generation? you know, about how to ensure that we remain secular, where you can practice your religion in any part of the country that you please without imposing your views or belief systems on any other person. What kind of conversations should we be having? And what, what should our lawmakers be thinking at the back of their minds? At least they've made the first step, which is dropping uh, this bill and, and you know, in, ensuring that it doesn't go through. But in subsequent uh, conversations that you said will inevitably come up. You know, what can, what should we be doing as a people to ensure this doesn't happen? Um, I, I'm going to be extreme. Uh, for me, uh, if you look at Sudan, you, know, you have now North Sudan, South Sudan. Uh, I think we should have Northern Nigeria and Sudan. You know, then they can practice whatever they want. <laughs> There's no dialogue because they will not stop. I told you it may take 1,000 years. They will still do it. But if you let everybody go their way, maybe you have the north, 
they remain there and you have the sovereignty down south, then you can do what you want. But if you remain and you think you can talk to your Jersey and people that don't care about anything, it will happen. It took hundreds of years before talking, you know, Constantinople. And they buy a to Guno, a Beef, and Jemakia, where Bianni Rapopo, Na Ibo Media, Boy Bice, when they were telling Yabu Nukozi, Dio Kempa, Bastamaki and Emino, but I know Nimia, and Bastamaka Moro and Di Bonazo, and Bastamaka Mazen Nam de Canus ladies. A Dickin Rayovan Nayoka Puni Rapopo. Kafi will you no dunk gay, I see you walk if you will you. A Macana, what I called you the banjo, or the Panama. I go now to my name. I come to the area alone. I go to phone number. You know what I go? I go to the beef. I go to the sea area. I go to the moon. I end up on Zante. I go to the moon. I end up on Zante. That only name my name. Bomane Gente. I never can only name my name. So I say I'm going to come and see you no more.